the culture is dissolving because the culture is a structure of category. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Right. So, and in fact, culture is a culture is a structure of category that we all share. So we see things the same way. Well, that's why we can talk. I mean, not exactly the same way because then we'd have nothing to talk about. But roughly speaking, we have a bedrock of agreement. Uh, that's the Bible, by the way. So I just walked through the Museum of the Bible in Washington. That was very cool. It's a very cool museum. So the structure, that's what the Bible Yeah, that's what provides. I figured out. I've been, I just figured this out this week. So it was a cool, it was a cool thing to walk through because it's, it's chronological. They have one floor, which is the history of the Bible. Mm. But it's not exactly that. It's really what it is, is the history of the book. Now, in many ways, the first book was the Bible. I mean, literally, because at one point there was only one book, like, as far as our Western culture is concerned, there was one book. And for a while, literally, there was only one book. And that book was the Bible. And then before it was the Bible, it was, a, you know, it was scrolls and it was writings on papyrus. And, but it was, we were starting to aggregate written text together. And it went through all sorts of technological transformations. And then it became books that everybody could buy, the book everybody could buy. And the first one of those was the Bible. And then it became all sorts of books that everybody could buy. But all those books in some sense, emerged out of that underlying book. And that book itself, the Bible isn't a book, it's a library. It's a collection of books. And so, what I figured out was, partly because I was talking to my brother-in-law, Jim Keller, who's the world's greatest chip designer and has now designed a chip that's as powerful as the human brain, which is optimized for artificial intelligence learning, by the way. And so, I talked to him about that. He said, you heard of the internet? I said, yeah, Jim, I've heard of the internet. He said, this is way more revolutionary than that. So, in any case, we were talking about meaning in text because we were talking about translation and the problem of understanding text. And Jim said, the meaning of words is coded in the relationship of the words to one another. And the postmodernists make that case that all meaning is derived from the relationship between words. That's, that's wrong because, well, what about rage? That's not words. And... What about moving your hand? That's not words. So it's wrong, but, but part of it's right because the meaning we derive from the verbal domain is encoded in the relationship between words. So, so now then you think, well, let's think about the relationship between words. Well, some words are dependent on other words. Some ideas are dependent on other ideas. The more ideas are dependent on a given idea, the more fundamental that idea is. By de that's a definition of fundamental. So now imagine you have an aggregation of texts in a civilization. You say, which are the fundamental texts? And the answer is, the texts upon which most other texts depend. And so you'd put Shakespeare way in there in English, because so many texts are dependent on Shakespeare's literary revelations. And Milton would be in that category, and Dante would be in that category, at least in translation. Fundamental authors, part of the Western canon, not because of the arbitrary dictates of power, but because those texts influenced more other texts. And then you think about that as a hierarchy, okay, with the Bible at its base, which is certainly the case. Now imagine that's the entire corpus of, ling of linguistic production, all things considered. Now, how do you understand that? Like, literally, how do you understand that? The answer is, you sample it by reading and listening to stories and listening to people talk. You sample that whole domain you build a low resolution representation of that in your inside you and then you listen and see through that and so it isn't that the bible is true it's that the bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth which makes it way more true than just true it's a whole different kind of true and i think this is i think this is not only literally the case factually i think it can't be any other way. It's the only way we can solve the problem of perception.